G'day, welcome back to another Landscape Photography in 3 Minutes video. I'm Friesen Manatsov here on top of this hill in uh, Strath Creek. My name's Peter Fritz and in today's video, which is episode number, God, what are we up to? It must be 15, I think. Uh, yes, we're up to number 15. In this episode, we're going to talk about filters. Do you need them? And if you do, which ones should you get? Well, I'm not a huge proponent of filters. I don't use them a great deal. Uh, but there are essentially three different filters that you might want to consider for landscape photography, and I'll tell you which ones they are and why you might use them. The first one, and probably the only one that I would use on a reasonably regular basis, is a polarizer. Now, I don't shoot a lot of water, but I guarantee you that Whenever I do shoot water, a polarizer is one of those filters that you really can't do without. A polarizer affects the way light comes into the lens and onto the sensor um, with respect to reflections. If the light is coming in at a 45 degree angle and causing a reflection on water or leaves or shiny rocks or anything that's, that's, uh, that's producing a reflection, it can eliminate those reflections. It's also great for creating additional contrast, um, bringing out the colors in the scene, in, uh, in leaves, in the sky, all that sort of stuff. And it, um, it creates a real richness to the color in a scene. But it's most useful, I guess it's two most useful features are that it can help to reduce or eliminate uh, reflections on shiny surfaces. And you can turn a polarizer and adjust the amount that it reduces those reflections. And the byproduct of that is, as you are reducing reflections, um, so that you can see through the water, for example, to the rocks below, or so that you can um, uh, see the texture and surface of the object which has reflections on it more clearly, the byproduct of that is, it also allows the colors to come through and allows them to pop. So a polarizer is really useful for that. The second thing that a polarizer is really useful for, and why I think it's the one filter, if you're only gonna have one filter in your bag that you should have, is it can also reduce the amount of light coming into the lens and onto the sensor. It can reduce the amount of light coming in by a couple of stops, which might be all you need to be able to lower your shutter speed enough to get a longer shutter speed to, a, to allow the shutter to drag a little bit more, they call it. Um, all that means is if you wanna shoot, say, moving water in a river, and you wanna get a shutter speed of, say, half a second or a second to be able to get that nice movement in the water, but there's too much light you're shooting in the middle of the day, a polarizer might be all you need to be able to, say, shoot at F16 or F22, uh, keep it at 100 ISO and get that shutter speed down nice and low to a half a second or a second and get that nice movement. So a polarizer really serves two purposes. Remove reflections and reduce the amount of light coming in through the lens to the sensor so that you can get a lower shutter speed. Now the second one is similar to the polarizer's second benefit and that is a neutral density filter. It reduces the amount of light coming in through the lens to the sensor and they can be anything from a stop to 10 stops and even more. Um, if you like to shoot um, really long exposures and get lots of movement in clouds going overhead or um, water crashing up onto, uh, onto the shore or you want to re remove all of the choppiness in water and just have that sort of milky ethereal sort of smoky look to water then a neutral density filter is your friend. I've got a couple of neutral density filters um, for my lenses that are magnetic using the Freewell magnetic system. And I can just rotate those to adjust the amount of um, neutral density effect. Just one tip with that, if you do get a neutral density filter that is a circular one that allows you to rotate it and adjust the amount of light that it blocks coming into the camera, make sure you get one that doesn't create that horrible X effect on your images. Some neutral density filters, the cheaper ones, uh, particularly on wide lenses, they tend to create this sort of, you know, um, dark X effect across your image and it can ruin your image. So make sure you get yourself a decent one and make sure that it says in the blurb for that filter that it doesn't have that horrible X effect, that it eliminates that effect. Um, the third filter is a, um, a graduated filter. Now, when I first started shooting a couple of decades, or a few decades ago, I was totally enamored with a Coke and filter system and the graduated tobacco and pink and magenta filters. It seemed that I put them on just about every photo. It was my way of making a really dull as dog shit <laughs> photo look interesting, especially the, uh, the tobacco grad filter. I used to put that on the sky of just about bloody every shot. Um, and it became sort of my very amateur looking trademark. But uh, what a lot of people tend to do these days is not have a colored graduated filter, they have um, neutral colored ones, they have uh, graduated gray filters. 
And what they do is help to reduce the, the amount of light coming through the lens to the sensor from the sky. So you would, um, you would have an adapter system where you have a sort of a frame that goes onto the front of your lens and then you have square filters or rectangular filters that slide down. And you can adjust how much they're, they're slid down over the lens to cover just the sky portion of your image. And that helps to balance out the foreground or, and midground and the sky in your image so you get a more balanced exposure. I don't use those. I had a whole um, filter system with the, the cradle, the holder and everything in it, and I sold it because I found that I would I preferred to have one less thing in my bag, which was a whole pouch full of filters, and instead just bracket my exposure. So if I'm confronted with a scene where I've got a bright sky and I've got a darker four and mid-ground, well then I'll take two or three exposures. A couple for the foreground and one nice and dark for the sky. And then I'll just blend them together in Photoshop or Lightroom. It's really easy to do that these days. So that's filters. A polarizer, which really serves two purposes, which is to reduce reflections and reduce the amount of light coming into the camera. Second is neutral density filters, which just reduce the amount of light coming into the camera so you can get nice lower shutter speeds. And the third is graduated filters to reduce the amount of light being captured um, in camera from the sky so that you can get a more balanced exposure. Anyway, if that was useful to you, please do give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.